On February 3rd, the Supreme Court released three decisions. I will read to you one of the decisions as follows. Supreme Court of the United States, Federal Republic of Germany v. Philip. Certiorari to the United States Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit. Argued December 7th, 2020, decided February 3rd, 2021. Respondents are the heirs of German Jewish art dealers who formed a consortium during the waning years of the Weimar Republic to purchase a collection of medieval relics known as the Welfenschatz. The heirs allege that when the Nazi government rose to power, it unlawfully coerced the consortium into selling the collection to Prussia for a third of its value. The relics are currently maintained by the Stiftung Priestischer Kulturweist SPK, an, instrumentally, an instrumentality of the Federal Republic of Germany and displayed at a Berlin museum. After unsuccessfully seeking compensation in Germany, the heirs brought several common law property claims in the United States, district court against Germany and SPK, collectively Germany. Germany moved to dismiss, arguing that it was immune from suit under the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act. As relevant, Germany asserted that the heirs' claims did not fall within the FSIA's exception to sovereign immunity for property taken in violation of international law, 28 U.S. Code 1605A3, because a sovereign's taking of its own national's property is not unlawful under the international law of expropriation. The heirs countered that the exception did apply because Germany's purchase of the Welfenschatz was an act of genocide and the relics were therefore taken in violation of international human rights law. The district court denied Ger Germany's motion to dismiss and the DC circuit affirmed. Held, the phrase rights in property taken in violation of international law as used in the FSIA's expropriation exception refers to violations of the international law of expropriation and thereby incorporates the domestic takings rule. A. The heirs contend that their claims fall within the FSIA's exception for cases involving property taken in violation of international law, 1605A3, a provision known as the expropriation exception, because the forced sale of the Welfenschatz con constituted an act of genocide, and genocide is a violation of international human rights law. Germany argues that the relevant international law is not the law of genocide, but the law of the international law of expropriation, under which a foreign sovereign's taking of its own national's property remains a domestic affair. 1. The domestic takings rule invoked by Germany derives from the premise that international law customarily concerns relations among states, not between states and individuals. Historically, a sovereign's taking of a foreign national's property implicated international law because it constituted an injury to the state of the, of the alien's nationality. A domestic taking, by contrast, did not interfere with relations among states. This domestic takings rule endured even as a growing body of human rights law made states' treatment of individual human beings a matter of international concern. And those who criticized the treatment of property rights under international law did so on the ground that all sovereign takings, not just domestic takings, were outside the scope of that law. This dispute over the existence of international law constraints, law constraints on sovereign takings eventually reached the court in Banco Nacional de Cuba versus Sabatino, 376 U.S. 398-436. Hesitant to delve into this controversy, the court instead invoked the Act of State Doctrine. In response, Congress passed the second Hickenlooper Amendment to the Foreign Assistance Act of 1964, which prohibits United States courts from applying the Act of State Doctrine, where a right to property is asserted based, on, based upon a taking by an act of that state in violation of international law, 22 U.S. Code 2370E2. Courts and commentators understood the amendment to permit adjudication of claims Sabatino had avoided deciding, i.e. claims against other countries for expropriation of American-owned property. But nothing in the amendment purported to alter any rule of international law, including the domestic takings rule. Congress used nearly identical language when it crafted the FSIA's expropriation exception 12 years later. 
Based on this historical and legal background, courts reached a consensus that the expropriation exceptions refer reference to violation of international law does not cover expropriations of property belonging to a country's own nationals. Republic of Austria versus Altman, uh, 541 U.S. 677-713, uh, Breyer J. Concurring. The heirs concede that the international law of expropriation retained the domestic takings rule at the time of the FSIA's enactment, but they read, but they read rights in property taken in violation of international law to incorporate any international norm, including international human rights law, rather than merely the international law of expropriation. The text of the FSIA's expropriation exception, however, supports Germany's reading. The exception places repeated emphasis on property and property-related rights, while injuries and acts associated with violations of human rights law, such as genocide, are notably lacking, a remarkable omission if the provision was intended to provide relief for atrocities such as the Holocaust. A statutory phrase concerning property rights most sensibly refers references the international law governing property rights rather than the law of genocide. The heir's position would arguably force courts themselves to violate international law, not only by ignoring the domestic takings rule, but also by de derogating international law's preservation of sovereign immunity for violations of human rights law. Germany's interpretation of the exception is also more consistent with the FSIA's express goal of codifying the restrictive theory of sovereign immunity, 28 U.S. Code 1602, under which immunity extends to a sovereign's, a sovereign's public, but not private acts. It would destroy the act's distinction between private and public acts were the court to subject all manner of sovereign acts public acts to judicial scrutiny under the FSIA by transforming the expropriation exception into an all-purpose jurisdictional hook for adjudicating human rights violations. Other three, other FSIA provisions confirm Germany's position. The heirs' approach would circumvent the reticulated boundaries Congress placed on the FSIA with regard to bringing claims asserting human rights violations. One FSIA exception, for example, provides jurisdiction over claims in which money damages are sought against a foreign state for personal injury or death or damage to or loss of property, but only where the relevant conduct occurred in the United States, 1605A5. And the FSIA's terrorism exception eliminates sovereign immunity for state sponsors of terrorism, but only for certain human rights claims brought by certain victims against certain defendants, 1605 AAH. Such restrictions would be of little consequence if human rights abuses could be packaged as violations of property rights and thereby brought within the expropriation exception. B. The heirs' counterarguments cannot overcome the text, context, and history of the expropriation exception. They claim that the 2016 Foreign Cultural Exchange Jurisdictional Immunity Clarification Act, which amends the FSIA to explain that participation in specified art ex exhibition activities does not qualify as commercial activity under the expropriation exception, 1605H, demonstrates that Congress anticipated that Nazi-era claims could be adjudicated under the exception. Congress's effort to preserve sovereign immunity in a narrow, particularized context, however, does not support the broad elimination of sovereign immunity across all areas of law. Other statutes aimed at promoting restitution to Holocaust victims on which the heirs rely generally encourage redressing those injuries outside of public court systems and do not speak to sovereign immunity. See, e.g., uh, Holocaust Expropriated Art Recovery Act of 2016, 130 Stat 1524. C. This court does not address Germany's argument that the district court was obligated to abstain from deciding the case on international committee grounds or the heirs' alternative argument that the sale of the Welfenschatz is not subject to the domestic takings rule because the consortium members were not German nationals at the time of the transaction. 894F3D406, vacated and remanded. Roberts, Chief Justice, delivered the opinion for a unanimous court.